The Three Missing Women in Springfield 3 In this video, we will talk about three women that went missing in Springfield, Missouri. The 18-year-old Stacy McCall, the 19-year-old Susan Susie Streeter and Susie's mother Cheryl Levitt, 46 years old. They went missing on June 7, 1992, from Levitt's home in the 1700 block of E, Delmer Street in Springfield, Missouri. The disappearances of the three women have haunted the families and remained a mystery for over two decades. This is the unsolved mystery of the three missing women in Springfield 3. Saturday, June 6, 1992, Stacy and Susie had just graduated from Kickapoo High School. At around 2 a.m. on June 7, the two young women were at a graduation party at another friend's house. Originally, the girls intended to spend the night at a hotel, then at a friend's home in Battlefield, but they left because the house was overcrowded with out-of-town guests. They drove their separate cars to Susie's house to spend the night with her mother, Cheryl. The two young women are believed to have arrived at Cheryl's home around 2.15 a.m. and had planned to visit Whitewater Amusement Park the following afternoon. Susie and Stacy arrived at the house, and the trail twists and turns into the darkness of the unknown. Cheryl's last contact with anyone was around 11.15 p.m. On June 6, 1992, when she was talking to a friend about refinishing and painting a dresser, Cheryl was a single mother who was described as close to her daughter and as successful she was a cosmetologist at a local salon. The following afternoon, friends went to Cheryl's house the next afternoon to meet Susie and Stacy before heading to the amusement park, but no one answered the door. The women's vehicles were parked in the driveway and the porch light was still on, but the glass globe covering the bulb had been broken and there was shattered glass on the front porch. The friends cleaned up the broken glass on the porch before entering the house through the unlocked front door, unaware that they were entering a crime scene. Confusion sets in. Friends initially assumed the women had gone for a walk. When the three women did not return home that day, a friend called Stacy's mother, Janice McCall. Janice had no idea Stacy had spent the night at Susie's house, thinking, she would spend the night in Battlefield. Stacy had last spoken to her mother the night before, around 10.30 p.m. on June 6, informing Janice that she would be staying in Battlefield. Stacy's mother went to Cheryl's house after receiving a call from one of the girl's friends who had been to the house, and later called the police to report the three missing women. When investigators arrived, they found no evidence of foul play or a struggle inside the house. In fact, all of the women's personal belongings remained inside the house, including keys, makeup, purses, and clothing. Cinnamon, the family's Yorkie, was nervously running about inside the house, and officers saw that the blinds inside the house were ajar, as if someone had been peeking through gazing outside throughout the night. Cheryl appeared to have been in bed watching television, her glasses and book on the nightstand, and cigarettes and lighter still in the house. Aside from the shattered globe on the porch, which was discarded before, it was determined it could have been a key piece of evidence. No other evidence of foul play was discovered at the house. There was nothing in the area after several searches. The three women appear to have vanished completely. Following the women's disappearances, police followed up on leads and interviewed partygoers the night before, as well as relatives, friends, and even boyfriends. One witness saw a green Dodge van in the area, but police were unable to identify the vehicle or its owner. Several callers suggested that the women be buried at a nearby hospital parking structure before a concrete pour. Susie's older brother, Bart Streeter, has also been named as a suspect. Several national television shows, including Unsolved Mysteries, 
48 Hours, and America's Most Wanted, cover the story, AMW. On New Year's Eve 1993, a mail tipter dialed America's Most Wanted but was disconnected when the operator attempted to connect the call to Springfield Police Department. Investigators believe the individual had intimate knowledge of the circumstances surrounding the disappearance of the three women. After searching the whole area, the police then questioned the neighbors. Many were questioned, but nothing seemed to point towards the disappearance until the police came across ex felon Robert Craig Cox. Robert Craig Cox was a person of interest in the case from the start. Cox was on death row in Florida for the murder of Sharon Zellers, a 19-year-old woman. The Florida Supreme Court eventually reversed the conviction due to a lack of evidence linking him to the crime scene. Cox was arrested for the second time in California for a kidnapping that occurred in 1985. After doing time in connection with the abduction, Cox returned to his hometown of Springfield, Missouri. Cox was working on the underground cable near Cheryl's home when the three women's disappearances, Janice McCall told news reporters. Cox has been jailed for aggravated robbery and kidnapping a woman in Texas, but later it was found that he knew the woman was killed and where she was buried. He remains in jail until 2025, but he was not found guilty of the disappearances of the three women. Former Springfield Sergeant Mark Webb allegedly provided information to Kathy Baird, an Ozark Sentinel crime reporter, that brought to light what some believe could be the key to solving the case. Law enforcement received a tip in 2002 that led them back to the unidentified green van seen in the area of Levitt's home the night the women vanished. The caller described two men driving a green van who had been working for a local concrete company at the time the women vanished. According to the caller, the two men buried the women's bodies on a farm in Webster County. Items discovered at the scene and the results of the search warrant were sealed after a two-week search of the property. Kathy Baird became personally involved with the matter and launched her inquiry, which led her to a parking garage under construction at Cox South Hospital in 1992. Susie and Cheryl live barely five minutes from the hospital. Mark Webb, now the chief of the Bolivar Police Department, acknowledged that during his stint as a lead investigator at Springfield Police, indications directing them to the hospital parking garage were received early on but were not considered credible. When asked if an independent team would be allowed access to the location to take a core sample, the hospital's public relations department sent an email stating that this was a matter for the Springfield Police Department but would cooperate with the inquiry. Even if the parking garage is not the final resting site of the three missing women, one has to wonder how the cost of coring an area of concrete is more important than providing an answer to a family who has been waiting over 25 years for any information to end a nightmare few can imagine. The case remains unsolved as of 2022, in spite of an upward of 5,000 tips from the public. Janice McCall, Stacy's mother, has never given up hope of finding her daughter alive. Like other parents searching for their missing child, giving up hope is not an option. Janice started One Missing Link, a charity organization that assists other families in their quest for missing loved ones after her daughter went missing. Janice McCall still awaits the return of her lost daughter, Stacy. The last thing I said to Stacy was that I love her, thank heavens. Janice recalled the last time she saw her daughter. Stacy claimed she loved them and promised to call later, Janice added. They took pictures after the graduation and asked Stacy if she wanted to eat her graduation cake, but she resisted, saying, don't cut it till tomorrow. I don't have anything that tells me for sure. So until they have found their remains, I have to believe that they're still alive and well. The women are still nowhere to be found, and it has been 28 years. An extensive investigation into the lives of the missing women has been conducted with the Federal Bureau of Investigations, Missouri State Highway Patrol, and numerous other law enforcement agencies, with no positive leads concerning the reason for their disappearance or their location. The location and prosecution of the people responsible for the abduction of the three women have been given a $42,000 reward. Cheryl Levitt, 
brown eyes, short bleached blonde hair, naturally wavy hair, longer on top and short in the back. Shira Levitt is frail looking, with freckles on her neck and upper breast. Stacy McCall, blue eyes, dark blonde hair to the middle of her back with sunlight and ends, white female, her face is freckled, and she has a dimple in the center of her chin. Susan, Susie, streeter, brown eyes, straight bleached blonde, shoulder length hair, huge teeth with little dental work. She has a three and a half inch scar on the top of her right forearm and a little tumor in the left corner of her lips, giving the impression that she has something in her mouth. What do you think might have happened to the three women? Share your thoughts down in the comment section. We would love to hear your opinions on the case. That's all for today. See you in the next crime investigation episode.